I was thinking that it would start, I ask you questions and you answer yes or no. Were you the mastermind that cheated the Olympics? Yes. The first voice that you hear is of director Brian Fogel. He is the mastermind behind the Netflix documentary entitled Icarus. His mission in creating this documentary was to explore the effects of doping or taking PEDs on someone who has a stellar athletic ability and to see how much it enhances their performance. Vogel enlisted the help of Dr. Gregory Rochenkov, a Russian scientist who worked in an Olympic and Paralympic athlete testing lab. Dr. Rochenkov helped Brian dope prior to a mock Tour de France that he was participating in. Following his race, Brian meets Dr. Rochenkov in Russia. It is right after when Vogel returns home to the U.S. that he finds out Dr. Rochenkov and his lab are being investigated for the tampering with and the manipulation of urine samples provided by Russian Olympic and Paralympic athletes. Every sport was Putin aware of the existence of the Russian doping system? Yes. As described briefly in the clip, Vladimir Putin, Russia's prime minister, is the mastermind behind this scandal. Putin enlisted Rochenkov's help in ensuring all of the drug tests of Russian athletes who were actively doping showed up as negative. This meant cheating the system by tampering with the urine samples and falsifying the test results. Upon the allegations of this scandal coming into focus, Russia was to be banned from the 2016 Olympics pending further investigations by WADA. The World Anti-Doping Agency, also known as WADA, was instituted in the 1990s with the mission to lead a collaborative worldwide movement for doping-free sport. used to hold the athlete's urine samples. As depicted here, the lab used secret holes in the wall to pass fresh urine and frozen urine between the two rooms. The frozen urine was clean because it was collected prior to the athlete's doping. The old frozen urine would be used to test, thus creating a false negative result. A negative test result proved positive for the Russian athletes. They were able to perform with the aid of performance-enhancing drug without getting caught. This meant more gold medals and personal bests for Russia, both guilt for Dr. Rochenkov. Well, for 2016, uh, our, our recommendation uh, is that, is that uh, the Russian Federation be suspended. Uh, in fact, one of our hopes is, is, is that they will volunteer that so they can undertake the remedial work in time to make sure that, that uh, Russian athletes can compete under a new, uh, a new f framework, if you like. Uh, if they don't, uh, then it has to play it, itself out, and, and the, the outcome may be that there are no Russian uh, track and field athletes in Rio. I hope that they get, the, they, they recognize that, that it's time to change and, and, and make those changes. We have identified possible criminal violations, and as I mentioned, have reported those. Uh, we have found uh, cover-ups. We found destruction of samples in the laboratories. We found payments of money in order to conceal uh, doping tests. Ninety-nine percent of Russian athletes are guilty of doping. That's according to a recent German documentary aired on ARD. The program also claims that Russian officials systematically accepted payments by athletes to cover up failed doping tests. To no great surprise, the Russian Athletics Federation has strongly denied the allegations, saying they are a pack of lies. According to the latest IAAF report, 67 Russian athletes are currently serving bans for doping, just over double the number from 2013. The Athletics World Governing Body and the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, have both said they will look into the claims. WADA also said that 
it had already received some information and evidence of the type exposed in the documentary, adding if action was warranted, it will take any necessary and appropriate steps under the code. Chenkov's personal account of the scandal made national news, which then turned into international news. The Russian Olympic doping scandal was the talk of all major news networks. All of this was captured in Fogel's documentary entitled Icarus. I believe this film does an excellent job accurately depicting the scandal. I also think Dr. Rochenkov's decision to come forward was done in the best way with the best intent. Both Vogel and Rochenkov acted on their moral compasses, nudging them to come forward with the information of the scandal. Rochenkov's colleagues both, saw, both lost their lives to, due to being associated with him. He is now in witness protection where he will be safe from the potential life-threatening effects of his whistleblowing. The best way in which we can all help alleviate the problem of doping in sports is by putting the phrase, if you see something, say something into practice. Doping often starts young and becomes habitual. Being an advocate and good role model for those younger athletes can promote good, healthy, and fair play.